about 20 times a day for me. There are times when I'm talking to somebody and things are still just a little bit blurry. I'm not sure if I got the whole picture of what they're talking about or if we're actually on the same page. And so I find it very helpful to, to seek some clarity in that. And one really simple way to do that is through what's called a perception check. So in this video, I'd like to just explain very quickly the perception check to you and, and explain some of the value of it. So the perception check basically is just a way for you to check your understanding of a situation and uh, and in a in an assertive but non-aggressive way to to just state your view of something and you know your perception of things and compare it with the other persons and ask ask for some clarity then so it's very very simple it's only three steps there's three steps to the perception check uh, but it's very simple, but very effective here. So the first step in a perception check is just a description of the behavior. So you're just describing what it is that's happening. Maybe it's happened before and now it's happening again and it shouldn't be, or it's what's happening differently. What you see, though, in your view as what exactly is happening. We want to be sure here we're speaking in um, in in kind of factual tones, a description of the behavior, not our evaluation of what that means or whether it's good or bad or whatever, but just actually matter of factly stating what is happening in that situation. Here's what I see happening in this situation. Okay. So a description of the behavior is, is uh, step one. Step two then is to provide two possible interpretations for that behavior. And it's important that you have two possible interpretations. It's not really important that you get one of them right, that one of them be the actual thing that's happening necessarily, or the reason that it's happening, uh, that it be the correct interpretation. But the, having two interpretations um, lets that person know that you're open to uh, possibilities here, right? That you're not, you're not painting them in a corner and saying, look, this is what you're doing. This is what's happening right now. And this is why you're not assigning blame, you're not uh, assigning intention or meaning to that necessarily. You're just saying, I don't know if it's this or if it's this. And, and opening that door to the possibility that it could be something else. And that's really important that the other person not feel like they're being trapped or backed into a corner there. Then the third step is very, very simply just a request for clarification in that situation. Just kind of, so what's that, what's happening here? What's going on? Um, so, um, and it can be as simple as that. It's just opening the door for them to take over the dialogue now and to explain, you know, from their perspective and to share what they're experiencing there. So that's it. That's just the three steps. Description of the behavior offering two possible interpretations of that behavior, and then a request for clarification. So let's run through uh, an example here or two. So let's say that you work in an office, and the office where you work, you have this special stapler. Right? It's a special red stapler, and you love it. Um, but this guy <clears throat> that you work with, he keeps coming by and taking the stapler. And you don't know why, but but, uh, but you know he keeps coming by and taking the stapler. So you actually talk to him about it, and you say, Look, Bill, I need you to stop taking my stapler. This is this is my special stapler, uh, and you, you've taken it several times. I'd really appreciate it if you would not. And he says, oh, no problem. My bad. I won't take the stapler anymore. I didn't know it meant that much to you. And then a couple weeks later, though, he comes by, and he takes his stapler again. And so, you know, later on when you see him, you say, you say Bill, look, you, you took my stapler again. What's happening here? Why, why did you take my stapler? Um, because, you know, you, you a couple weeks ago said, you would not take the stapler. We talked about this two weeks ago. You said, that's your stapler. I understand that it's special to you and I won't take it anymore. Then this morning I came in and it's gone and I see that you have it. Okay. So again, matter of factly, not saying, you know, not calling them names, not doing anything like that. Just this is what happened. We had this discussion and and now this is what's happened in this situation though, uh, currently. Uh, then offer two possible interpretations, right? So we've described the behavior. So I'm not sure if it's just that you forgot that conversation or if you just, you know, decided to take it anyway. You know, what? You know, so you're offering two op opportunities, two possibilities. Again, whether or not one of them is actually the correct interpretation is less important than the idea that you're open to the possibility of, of something uh, other than what's specifically on your mind. Uh, and then to, to request clarification, you say, so, so what's happening? Here, what, what happened um, that you have the stapler again this time? And then you're opening that door for that person to then discuss what happened. Right? Again, it's assertive, but it's non aggressive. Theoretically, it, it wouldn't put that person in a defensive position, at least not automatically. Uh, now, some people still get their back up, but, uh, but the idea is to have an assertive but non aggressive way to approach that situation and clarify the meaning and the intention of the other person um, so that we're not just making assumptions about it. 
So again, the three steps, description of the behavior, two possible interpretations of that behavior, and then a request for clarification. A very, very simple process for a perception check, but I'm telling you, it can be of assistance to you on a daily basis to make sure that you have a clear picture of what's happening in a particular situation, especially when there are or potentially more than one interpretation of what's happening. Okay? You want to make sure that you clarify that and that you're getting on the same page, or at least getting that other person's perspective on what's happening. If you have questions about the perception check or anything else related to perception, please feel free to um, shoot me an email. Love to hear from you via email and happy to discuss it with you there. In the meantime, I hope that you will put this to work, that you'll put the perception check to work and, and uh, find some use for it. It's a, it's a really simple but really effective way to make sure that, that uh, you're understanding the perception of the other person in a situation.